It's not easy yeah. to do that. The factory does a real good job. If they want more power, they need more compression, and they need bigger valves. They only rejet if you need to. About the only rejetting we do is a different pilot jet with an exhaust pipe to make them start a little easier in the cold, yep. and uh, maybe just a little bit of response, better mm -hmm. response off the throttle. Um, the the uh, pro pro circuit jets, pro no, the bloody whatever they are, pro cycle jets. Yeah, pro cycle jets. Yeah, jetting. those, and uh, we've taken a few out and yep. put them back to standard. So sometimes it's too much fiddling around. If somebody's prepared to put the time in, why? Why, why don't you just go riding? Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's the hell. That's what I got my bike for. <laughs> but if they want, if they are fiddler, that's beaut. And you know, some people like to put tossels on the end of their handlebars and <laughs> ape hangers and shit like that. And that's great if that's what they like to do. And if you want to fiddle with your carburetor and put different jets in it and stuff around, and then say, oh, that's using too much fuel. Oh no, it's not quite responding. And they ring me up and they say, oh, it splutters in the mid range, and I've put a pro cycle jet and I've cut the airbox. I've done all that good stuff. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So the negatives of it? The biggest issue, I reckon, is they use more fuel, they don't go any damn better, um, and you fiddle around all the time. Yeah. You're always stuffing around with it, you know, not get it, just, you're just trying to get it right. And some blokes do get it right, but very few of them get any more power out of it because they haven't put it on a dyno to test it, and it sounds like it's going better because when you cut the airbox out, the induction noise is there. And you open the throttle and it goes blap, and you think, man, that's powerful. It's not. Your brain's fooling you, or your ears are fooling you. And that's what happens. We put the things on the dyno, and we cut the airboxes up. It was shit house. They went backwards. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and they used guts more fuel. So we made we developed different camshafts, and then we were able to keep the airbox open. And we had the, this is talking about the safari, and, when, and we had the police radar on, on them, and we're getting 165 kilometres an hour out of the DR650. Standard piston valves and everything, standard carburetor, Rejetted. We had, I think, 155 or 158 jets or something in them, but we had the airbox cut then, and we had different camshaft profile, and we made six camshafts before we got one right, and I, and it wasn't me, it was Paul Rooney at uh, Alstonville working on a dyno doing it for us. I took the DRs over there, and yeah, and we fiddled around, and so it's not easy yeah. to do that. The factory does a real good job. If they want more power, they need more compression, and they need bigger valves. And then they can put a flat slide carburetor on it with a stain tune on it or something like that. And, but get more power, you need more compression and you need bigger valves. Yeah, you need to do a lot uh, more than just reach You can put a big piston in it mm -hmm. and that does a certain thing, but it's no good unless you put, you know, the big valves have got to go with a big piston then too. Yep. So the easiest way is high compression piston. Um, even a high compression piston on its own will help, but a high compression piston, free wind valves in it to make it, you know, that's a, the other DR650 that they made. Yeah. The, the free wind, which has got two millimetre bigger valves each side, I think. Um, and and then it'll be a flat slide carby and the thing will pr do proper wheelies in third gear, and <laughs> that sort of stuff. But, you know, it so, doesn't help when yeah. you're 200 kilometres from Inaminka and there's nothing but corrugations. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it drives me nuts the people that ring up and what and You know, that's all right. They can ring me up and talk about it, but... It does drive me nuts when they've stuffed around with it and then want me to fix it on the phone. No, <laughs> free. Oh, 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 gonna go pick some motorbikes. Okay, I've seen some blokes tell me that they can get, um, you know, as good a fuel consumption. Nobody's telling me they're getting any better. By cutting the spring, they're shortening the lever. Therefore, they, they, the only thing they might be doing is reducing the preload on the spring. So the first little bit might react a little bit quicker. But that's, that spring is so damn soft anyway. And I don't know, I, I've yet to try one of those bikes that I reckon works good. I don't doubt that if you fiddle around with it enough, you can get the mixture correct. See, they're made for a, a, a USA. The Australian carburetors are different. They have blocked up pilot jets. Um, they've got different needles in Australia. And really? Even though it's the same DR650? Yes, but they jetted for a different country. That's why in the parts book, our market is E24. 
and the rest of the world is different numbers, E33, E12. We have different requirements. The US, the USA had much stricter um, EPA, you know, the Environmental Protection Authority requirements than Australia had. Health bikes were able to come a little bit different. Of course, the DR650 is a very durable bike and there's plenty of different ways to kit it out to suit yourself. There's no right or wrong answer. That I'm no expert. This is just a conclusion I've come to from working at Vince's for a few weeks and uh, rebuilding my motorbike over there, as well as many conversations with him and a few of the mechanics at Vince Strang Motorcycles. Also, if you want to buy any products from Vince Strang Motorcycles, please use the coupon code NBUCK5 on their we online store, vincestrangmotorcycles.com.au. Uh, and check out a wide range of products for everything DR650, DRZ400, motocross bikes and a wide range of other products. Check it out. Other possible negatives of rejetting your carburetor to a bigger jet, cutting a hole in your airbox, maybe cutting the spring as well um, on the slide. Putting more wear and tear on your motor, reducing the lifetime of the motor. Seeing as though one of my biggest goals for my bike was longevity, seeing as though I wanted to get around the whole world, that was a very important thing for me. By putting a bigger jet in your carburetor, cutting of the spring as well, you're, you're allowing more fuel into your engine, which dilutes the oil inside your engine. Therefore, reducing the lubrication in the engine, causing more wear and tear. So if you have chosen to rejet it, it might be a good idea to change your oil a bit more regular than advised, um, just to keep the engine lubricated. Well, another negative, um, if you watch the first episode um, that I put up, when I ran out of petrol, you'll see there's a hole in the airbox. Um, and on the service episode as well. When I took that air filter out, the air filter was filthy. Obviously, it was a relatively old air filter as well. So that's another big ne negative of cutting a hole in your airbox. If you do cut a hole in your airbox, or if you already have one, put a piece of mesh over there or something to reduce all the dust and st um, like bigger particles coming into your airbox. Obviously, it's a tough bike, so it will survive from it. Make sure you're checking your air filter and cleaning it out. It's going to cause a lot more wear and tear on your motor by having dirty air coming in. And with a big hole in your airbox, there's going to be more stuff you don't want to be coming in, coming in. That's another big one for me, which is why I put a new airbox in. I figured this video was somewhat necessary because most people on YouTube are talking about the pros of rejetting, but very few are talking about the negatives of rejetting and all the other things that come with it. Personally, I trust the people at Suzuki and Vince Strang, who's been working with the DR650 for almost 30 years and motorbikes for almost his whole life. So yeah, over and out, I'm a Kosi for life. Stay unbuckled. Check your next episode.